Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for getting ready to listen to your new episode of Shooting Lights Out. The Playmakers Bar and Shooting Lights Out is sponsored by Fanatics. Get your efficient license everything with Fanatics. From hats to jerseys to shirts to pants to double bags to whatever you want, including memorabilia from Fanatics.com. Get great deals, great sales on everyday prices with your official license everything. Fanatics. And it's also brought to you by Liz. Locker room by Liz. Get your favorite hat with your favorite team logo on it. Get even customized t-shirts from Locker Rooms by Liz. Now, let's prepare for a shooting. Lights out. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shooting Lights Out. This is going to be a busy week for me when it comes to Shooting Lights Out. This is the first of three episodes that I'm doing today. First of three episodes I'm doing today. Uh, before I get into it in today's uh, first show, uh, Fanatics.com, if you heard the opening, the opening intro, Yes, we are sponsored by Fanatics. The official license is everything. Today only. Today only, ladies and gentlemen. You can get up to 65% off site wide using the promo code Rank. That is R I N K Rank to get up to 65% off on site wide items today. So get ready, get your gear, get all that going, especially with Mark Madison going, which is part of the reason, the main reason why I'm doing three shows this week instead of the normal one. Uh, we are also sponsored by Liz, and for today only, Liz by Locker Room, today only, you can get up to 70% off clearance sale, plus free U.S. shipping over $24. That is Liz, Locker Room by Liz, up to 70% off clearance sale, plus free shipping over orders. That's $24. Use the promo code Liz24. That is L I D S two four. So let's get let's get it. There's a lot of stuff going on in the basketball world, and it's a lot of things going on. That's why I gotta bring it up to three shows. That are one big show. We're gonna bring it up to three shows. So today, ladies and gentlemen, today, 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 we are going to focus on the NBA today. And you know, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we will focus on the NCAA, the men's and the women's. Uh, I have a special guest coming on for the women's. Queen of Who's Making Price, we're going to dive into the women's tournament. I know Tuesday, I'm going to dive into the men's. I might have some guests. I don't know yet. I'm still working that out. But today, we're going to focus on the NBA, okay? Today is all about the NBA because they're going down the stretch. we about 15 games left into the season, okay? So let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, first, I'm going a little too fast. I'm sorry. Kevin Durant, ankle expected to miss two to three weeks, so as they say. It was back on March 9th. It was about four days ago, he's going to be evaluated close to the end part of the season. They said there's a chance he could play that final week of the season, or he could sit out in this return for the playoffs, which is quite interesting. But we're going to get into why a little later because we're going to look at the standings. I believe as of right now, I do believe that the Suns are sitting fourth in the West right now. I could be wrong. Let me look at it just to be sure right now. Let's see what he exactly is in the standings right here. They are fourth in the West right now at 37 and 30. Uh, we're going to see how long can they keep it there because they, they got that final spot. They only uh, they are two games ahead of the Los Angeles Clippers, who are fifth right now. So we're going to see if they can hold fort without Kevin Durant. You know, Devin Booker, Chris Paul, and DeAndre Ayton, they got to hold down a fort and whatnot without KD. See, they can maintain that force spike. If they can maintain that force spike, that's home court in the first round at the very least for the uh, Phoenix Suns. All right. So 
Kevin Durant, ankle injury, he got hurt doing pregame one month in a in a home matchup. So he has never played a home game in Phoenix as of right now. The three games he's played, he's played all on the road. Never had the home crowd cheer him on yet. So they still got to wait for that one, and it could come into the playoffs. Nevertheless, Kevin Durant will be reevaluated within about the next two, about the next week or two to go on. Okay, so we should see where he's at right now, and we'll go forward from there in that point of standard. All right. Grizzlies talked to John Moran about conduct before video, coaches say. So Taylor Jenkins said they had a meeting with John Morant. Uh, before the video surface of him with an apparent handgun in the club out in uh, Denver, Colorado. Nevertheless, he, other reports came out saying they te the team had a team, a players only meeting led by Steven Adams about the team's conduct off the court for the alleged video, before the video surface on Instagram. Uh, nevertheless, Denver PD has came out and said that they will not be charging John Moran. They don't have enough evidence of him breaking any laws in Denver about that video that was that was published in a nightclub out in Denver, Colorado. There's no evidence that he broke a law. Uh, that's some good news. Other other news coming out. Um, John Moran will be missing at least the next four games. At first, it was two. Now it's now it's up to six. John Moran did come out and apologize to the to Memphis, to the organization, to the city of Memphis, to the fan base of Memphis, to his family, to his supporters out there of his behavior as of lately. Uh, hopefully, uh, he's getting the help that he needs. He's getting the uh, the good help that he needs. That he has a great supporting system around him right now, and proximity, and that the uh, he will come back. To do what he needs to do, he's the first of this franchise. He is the first of the franchise in Memphis. Uh, he is one of the faces of the league. When you talk NBA, John Moran is in the conversation. You know, you hear John Moran, you hear Steph Curry, you hear LeBron James. You know, okay, he has that spot because Zion Williamson can't stay healthy, so we don't see Zion enough. And so, who's the number one? Two, who's the number two pick in that draft? That would be one John Moran from Murray State. So he's a face of he's one of the faces of the league. So we we need one of the faces of the league to do what he needs to do to get himself right mentally, so he can get back on the court and do what he does best on the court, physically. Nevertheless, it's a tough situation, and we are all praying for John Morant. We are all hoping that he gets the help that he's that he needs, that he's going to get back on the court sooner rather than later. To do what he does best because this team meant this. They are currently third. And we'll see why later on when we get to the standings. But he's currently third in the West. Kyrie Irving foot, Luka Doncic style. They were out for the game over the weekend against them. They're out for the game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, I believe that thing was updated not that long ago, if I remember correctly. Uh, they said Kyrie Irving is questionable for this game. There's a chance that he might play, but Luka is definitely out for this game. This is an important game for both teams, understanding-wise. Dallas is hanging around that 7-6 spot. They want, they, they want that 6 spot to avoid a play-in. Memphis is currently third. They was second. But they are currently third now, so a very important game for both the Mavericks and the Grizzlies, okay? And this game is in Dallas. It'll be on ESPN. So it should be an interesting one how both teams do without their star players. Sideline with John Morant not with the team and Luka Doncic not playing at all in tonight's game against the Grizzlies. Kyle Lowry comes off the bench and returns as he losing overtime. That was over the weekend where Kyle Lowry was dealing with a, uh, I want to say a hamstring injury, some type of leg injury. And he has okay to come off the bench. So that streak of starting up was like 250 something straight games as a starter. What well, had came to an end, but he's okay because he's returning from injury. 
and you know the, with the Heat organization, who does a great job of trying to play bring players back slowly to ensure they they are back for the long run, which is the playoffs, which is not not that far away. They want to make sure Kyle Lowry gets to 100% before it's that playoff push to get him back in the starting lineup because they are a fight team right now. Last time I checked, they was in a playing spot. But we, like I said earlier, we'll be looking at the standings in a bit. So now that is what we are at. So Kyle Lowry is still, you know, going through some things right now. So hopefully once this stretch run is over with, you can get back in the starting lineup and get ready for the playoff because – like I say, we're not that far away from the uh, playoffs. All right, let's take a quick break right here. When we come back, we're going to recap what took place over the weekend. The Playmakers blog is proudly to announce that it is sponsored by Fanatics. Fanatics, where you can get all your official license, sports gear, memorabilia, whether it's for the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, or even International Soccer League, or even college sports. So whip your team, whip the hardware, get comfortable, because Fanatics is the way to go, where sports fans shop and official license everything. All right, welcome back to Shooting Lights Out, ladies and gentlemen. As I said earlier, Fanatics, your official license everything. Today only. Up to 65% off site wide orders. Use the promo code RANK, R A N K. That is your promo code to get up to 65% off site wide on your Fanatic order. All right, now that we are back on Shooting Lights Out, let's recap what took place over the weekend beginning on Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Friday, we saw the Cleveland Cavaliers down in South Beach to take on the Miami Heat in a game where uh, the stars showed up. Uh, Donovan Mitchell for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Jimmy Butler for the Miami Heat. Despite Donovan Mitchell going for 42 in the game, it was Jimmy Butler with the 33 points, five boards. He also got help from Tyler Hero with 25 points and nine boards to hold off the Cleveland Cavaliers 119 to 115 in that game. That was a good win for the Miami Heat that put them at 36 and 32 back on Friday. Very good win. Uh, we're going to head from South Beach. We're going to head up north to the city of Brotherly Love. It was the Philadelphia 76ers hosting the Portland Trailblazers. And Portland, yet again, found himself with a big lead. I think the lead we as high as 18. And they blew it. Philadelphia came back and beat the the beat the Portland Trailblazers one twenty one nineteen at home with Joel and B hitting the game on a jumper, fadeaway jumper. Uh, Anthony Simon thirty four points to lead the Portland Trailblazers. Demi Lillard gave you twenty two points with eleven assists. You got twenty four from from uh, Jeremy Grant, but it wasn't enough. Cause Joel and B thirty nine points, seven boards to lead the way. For the 76ers comeback win over the Portland Trailblazers. If Portland was to be able to hold on to big leads, Portland would not be fighting for a postseason berth or a playing berth, should I say. I'm even gonna be gonna keep it real here. If Portland had to, if Portland learned how to hold on to a big leads, they would not be 31 and 36 after losing that game. They'll probably be somewhere 38, 39, 40 wins. If they learn how to hold on to big behind leads. But they don't. This is why they fight for a playing spot. And could possibly listen because the other teams are learning how to win. That's just, it irks my nerves. When you can have, you can build to a 20 point lead and you can blow it numerous times. It hurts my freaking nerves. It get, it gives me a headache. I can't stand it. I really can't stand it. I really can't. Okay, I just can't. All right, from the city of Brady Love down to the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., where two teams that are fighting for a playing spot do battle 
in the nation's capital, the Washington Wizards hosting the Atlanta Hawks. 114 to 107, the Hawks get that win. They sweep, they sweep the two-game series in the nation's capital over the Wizards. The battle of, of young stars between Bradley Burr and Trey Young. Trey Young, 28 points, 9 assists. Bradley Bill, 27 points, 6 boys, and 5 assists. But it was the Hawks getting the W over the Wizards. Dropping the Wizards to 31 and 6. The Hawks move up to 34 and 33. Continue on. This is all from Friday. The Nets going to Minnesota and come out with Torres 124, 123, and the Twin City in overtime. Despite not having Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, the Brooklyn Nets are still playing some good ball. Mikael Bridges, is, who's coming out to be a star now, he just balling. 34 points to lead the way. You got 29 suspensive Dan with him, but 11 assists. That's a team right there. And the Brooklyn Nets has seven guys in double figures. You can do Thorin Finney Smith in there with 11, Cam Johnson with 15, Nick Classen with 11, Royce O'Neill off the bench with 12 and 15 boards, and Seth Curry with 11 off the bench. Anthony Evers led the Minnesota Timberwolves with 32 points and his boards. He got a double double from Woody Gobert with 26 and 13. He got 15 apiece from Carl, from, uh, not Carl, but uh, Kyle Anderson and Jalen McDaniels. But it wasn't enough to defend home court. Then they close out Friday night. D'Angelo Russell returned to the Lakers as they host the Toronto Raptors, and they put it on the Toronto Raptors, 122 to 112. D'Angelo Russell returned and led the way with 28 points in the game. You all on with five rebounds and nine assists. They didn't need Anthony Davis, who only scored eight points in that game. And gave you nine rebounds. We didn't need it because uh, D'Angelo Russell came back with a vengeance. And Dennis Smith Schuster came off the bench to back up D'Angelo Russell with 23 points and seven. I said, so your point guards combined for 51 points, 16 assists, and six rebounds. That's a that's a damn that's a damn good stat for point guards to combine for like that. Sorry, but yeah, Raptors can can do nothing. That was Friday. Let's go to Saturday. Saturday, we saw the Miami Heat, who got a big win over Cleveland, but they lost to the uh, in-state rival, the Orlando Magic, 126-114 to 114 in overtime. That's the Magic's outscored the Heat 18-6 in overtime. How you get scored 18-6 in overtime? By the Orlando Magic, Miami. Jimmy Butler dropped 38 points. You got 14 and 7 from Bam out of Bible. That's not going to cut it, Bam. You are all-star. And you coming out here and getting 14 and 7. That is not you. It's not what Miami needs from you, Bam. They need more from you, Bam out of Bio. Jimmy needs more from you. Okay? If Miami's going to be a team to be threatened with in the playoffs like they have been for the past four or five years, Bam out of Bio needs to do better. There's no if ands or buts about it. Bam out of Bayou cannot be sitting here with 14 and 7 in games. That cannot happen. That just cannot happen. Tyler Hill gave you 14 and 5. You got 13 from Gabe Vincent. It was an off night for, for the Heat, but Bam gets to play better. And this young Orlando team, I love this. Uh, this young, this team is young, but they are balling. They are some ballers. Paulo Ben Carroll, 17, 10, and 9. Frank Ryder, 17, 8, and 6. Wendell Carter Jr., 27, and 11 to lead the Magic. Michael Folks, 12 points, 8 assists. Uh, Gary Harris gave you 11 points. You got 16 off the bench apiece from, Carl, from Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs. Them two by the circle bound for 32 points, 7 assists, and 11 rebounds. That's a great production from from your from your backup guards. That is a very great production. And yet, the Molano Magic is still in the hunt for a playing spot. Surprisingly, at twenty eight and forty right now. Like I said, when we show the stand, you will understand this stuff. But Miami needs more from Bam Adebayo, and they ain't getting it. 
The Boston Celtics went down to the Dirty Bird to take on the Atlanta Hawks. Marcus Smart, Trey Young getting to it. Marcus Smart gets injected, but it didn't matter because Jason Tatum had his back with 34 points to lead away with a 134-125 win over the Atlanta Hawks, even though Trey Young dropped 35. There's levels to this. When Trey Young, when Trey Young officially learns that his levels to this, he will be something to be reckoned with in the playoffs. Yeah, everybody's enamored with that one run that they had to the Eastern Conference Finals. We all know why they got there, and we know what happened when they got there. Until they put it all together and understand this little to this, you won't be the Milwaukee, and you won't be the Boston, and you might not be Philly. Let's, let's go around. So there's levels to this, okay? There's levels to this. Uh, the first matchup, uh, over the weekend, Dallas and Memphis got together down in Memphis where uh, there was no Kyrie Irving and no Luka Doncic in that game. And the Grizzlies did not have John Morant, but nevertheless, 112 to 108 was the, was the score. Desmond Bain, 25 points to lead the Grizzlies. And you had Tim Hardaway Jr. led the Dallas Mavericks with 23 points. Jared Hardy gave you 22. Jared Green gave you 21, but it wasn't enough. That's the Grizzlies got the much needed win. In that one, and then you had the New York Knicks in the city of Angel to take on the Los Angeles Clippers. Spike Lee was in attendance, sent next to Steve Bauman, the owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. And it was Kawhi, it was the Kawhi Leonard show 38 points. Cardinals got 22 as the Clippers hold off the Knicks 106 to 95. The Knicks was on that dropped the Knicks down to. The a third game losing streak at this point in time after they won nine in a row and I gave them a heat check. Continue on the Saturday. Good win for the Oklahoma City Thunder of the New Orleans Pelicans, 110 to 196. They are they put them in a tie right now as both teams are fighting for a playing spot. Your Saturday night showcase. It was the Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Golden State Warriors, your last two NBA champions. Last year was the Golden State Warriors, the year before the Milwaukee Bucks. Steph Curry took over in the fourth quarter in overtime, dropping 22 of his 36 total points in the fourth quarter in overtime. As he scored nine points in overtime, the Milwaukee only scored five. Milwaukee was outscored 14 to five in overtime. Steph Curry had nine of the 14 for the Golden State Warriors. Great win, but doubt, even though Giannis did not play for the Milwaukee Bucks, let's get that out the way. Nevertheless, this team was still able to compete. Yeah, Milwaukee had seven guys in double figures, led by Chris Middleton and Hoop Lopez, both having 19 points each. He had 18 from Holiday, 15 from Bobby Portis, 15 for Joe Eagles. You had 13 for Jared Carter. You had 12 from Grayson Allen. But it was the Steph Curry show. Steph Curry, 36 points. Clay Thompson added 22. Devin DiVincenzo added 20. You got 19 from you got 18 from Jeff Green off the bench, only 13 from Jordan Poole. Nevertheless, the Golden State Warriors got the win, a much needed win that they need. But can they take that on the road? That is my big question for the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, play like this at home, by the way. If I think, by the way, that's my opinion. If Giannis would have played, I don't think y'all win that game. Just to be honest, I don't think y'all win that game. If Giannis is playing, y'all not winning that game. Okay. This team, this is not the championship team that I have known to watch over the past four, five, six, seven, whatever, how many years you want to call the run. Four-time champions. They don't look like this. During the four-time champions, they will win on the road, and they will beat you the same exact way they do at home. And it's like, well, we got to find some type of way to beat you. But on the road, they don't play like this. Is at home or you win for it? You win for it. Is at home? Nevertheless, 35 to 33 on the season. Milwaukee still has the best record in the lead at 48 and 19. The final game for Saturday night, it was down in the desert with the Phoenix Suns hosting the Sacramento Kings. The Kings, bro, the Kings have 40 wins. The Sacramento Kings have 40 wins because they beat the Suns 128 to 119. I want y'all to understand the Sacramento Kings have more wins than the Phoenix Suns. They have more wins than the Golden State Warriors. They have more wins than the Lakers and the Clippers. The Sacramento Kings. 
It's the third team in the West to have 40 wins. Memphis has 40 wins. Denver has like 45, I think. 40, 40. I don't remember. I think it's like 45 right now. The Kings, though. And it's about committee. There's no one person. It's about committee. Like the leading scorer for the for the Kings in that game against the Suns was Harrison Barnes with 19. But they scored 128. Your leading scorer is Harrison Barnes with 19 points, and you scored 128 points. The year and Fox had 18 points. Malik Monk on the bench with 18 points. So bonus had 17 points. Lyle's off the bench with 13. Mitchell off the bench with 13. Edwards off the bench with 12. Keegan Murray ain't even scored. He only took three shots. He ain't even scored. They ain't, that's even worse. Like, they leading rookie didn't even score and only took three shots, and they beat the Phoenix Suns. It is things like this that amazes me. When I said the Kings would be the surprise, that we would be the team I would, I would look out for, I didn't mean like this, okay? Because I knew they had a head coach in Mike Brown. Mike Brown's a champion. He coached LeBron James, Kyrie, and all that. He, he coached that team, okay? He's been under Steve Kerr with the Warrior Dynasty for quite some time. So he's part of about at least three of the championships that the Golden State Warriors won, if not all four. So I knew bringing in Mike Brown with his young team, but the time that I watched him, though, I'm saying they can make the playoffs. They must like probably get a turn a uh, uh, play in because I don't see a big turnaround, but they gonna it's gonna be a turnaround. But it was a big turnaround because they the third team in the West they have 40 wins. So shout out to Mike Brown and the second mental keys on now. Man. And then let's get to yesterday's lineup, beginning with the Washington Wizards. In the city of Bay, I love to take on the Philadelphia 76ers. And it was no problem from Philly whatsoever. 112 and 83. Joel B, 34 points, eight boards. James Harden with a quiet 18 and 14 on the day. That's all it really took for them to take down the Washington Wizards, giving Philly their 45th win of the season and having Washington trying to fight for that playing spot about third right now. Now, so it's a big shocker right here. Denver, Colorado, as the Brooklyn Nets walked into Denver, Colorado and took down the Denver Nuggets, 122 to 120. Mikael Bridges led the way with 25 points. You got 20 from Nick Claston, 20 from Nick Claston. That's that's crazy. And a matchup with Jokic, and you still can come up with 20 points. I like that. 15 from Danny Woody, 15 from Dorian Finney Smith. Cam Johnson gave you 14. You got 11 off the bench from uh, Russell Neal, 12 off the bench from Seth Curry. Not bad. The uh, two time leading MVP gave you a triple double with 35 points, 20 boards, and 11 assists. So, Youngest gave you 35 points, 20 rebounds, and 11 assists, and you lose that game. And you lose that game. You lose this game. When Yokis got you 20, 35 points, 20 rebounds, and 11 assists. And you lose that game, brother. You, this is the game that you lose. Let's see. Uh, Jamal Murray, 17 points, bad shit with day. Five for 19 from the field. All five put shots with three pointers. Five or 12 from three. Michael Porter Jr., 23 points. Good. That's a good show. Nine for 12 from the field. That's a good show. Uh, Aaron Gordon, only 13 points. Need more from you. Uh, Kateris Carr Report, only eight. That's not good. Uh, Jeff Green, only seven. Bruce Brown, only nine. Only got two points from Reggie Jackson. Like, that's not going to cut it. Yes, this is a bad time to be on the losing streak, Denver. That's your third consecutive loss with, I think, two of them at home. Okay, you lost to the Bulls. Hey, matter of fact, you lost to the Bulls, the Spurs, and now the Nets. Listen to the team that you lost to, Denver, and you, you're you the team that went, that's 45, that's 46 and 22. Yeah, the last three games were the Bulls, the Spurs, and the Nets, and you lost all three. You lost to the Bulls 117 to 96. Then you came, then you went to San Antonio, and you got beat 120 to 128 by the Spurs. I don't know how you get beat by 28 by the Spurs. I don't know how you get beat by Denver. 
double digits by the Spurs. I just, I just don't understand that. And then you come back and you lose to the Brooklyn Nets. That's a three-game losing streak, Denver. You're, you're supposed to be the best team in the West. This is not the time to be on a losing streak. This ain't the time for that. This ain't time for that. You need to get you need to write your ship right away. Now you gotta go on an East Coast trip now. Matter of fact, speaking of the East Coast trip, you gotta go to Toronto, you gotta go to Detroit, you gotta go to New York for both New York for the Knicks and Brooklyn. Washington, before you come home, you gotta play Milwaukee on the 25th of March. And then Philly comes in on the 27th. Hey, uh, y'all might want to turn this around, Ruth. Look, lucky enough for y'all, y'all have a huge lead in the West. It's gonna take a miracle for you for either Memphis or Sacramento to catch y'all, but you do not want to go in the playoffs losing games now. This ain't the time to lose games, you're different. You worked all this hard work to now start losing games. That's not how we were here in the NBA. I'm gonna need y'all to get it together. I'm gonna need y'all to get it together. All right, back to that. Uh, the New Orleans Pelicans beat the Portland Trail Blazers 110, 127 to 110. No, Damian Lillard, it didn't even matter because it was about Trey Murphy for the New Orleans Pelicans. Like 41 points, 13 from 20 from the field, not for 14 from three. He also grabbed seven rebounds just for the heck of it. And then CJ McCullough added 22 points with 11, with 11 assists and five rebounds. I mean, it don't even matter. Anthony Simons didn't show up. He only had 17 points. Matisse Thibault, 10 points. No Damian Lillard, as I said. So, yeah. And then the New York Knicks, who was on a three-game losing streak, snapped a three-game losing streak against the Los Angeles Lakers, one twelve to one away. Julius Randle being that being the man of New York that he needs to be, thirty-three points, eight rebounds, five assists. R.J. Barrett being that sidekick, thirty points, five boards. The other three points all took. Anthony Davis, seventeen points, sixteen boards. But D'Angelo Russell is being that point guard, that scoring point guard, and when he's trying to score 33 points to lead away for the Lakers with eight assists and five boys, but he didn't have help. Then the shooter, 14 points off the bench. Austin Reed, 13 points off the bench. Rory Hachimura, 12 points off the bench. Anthony Davis, 17 and 16. The rebounds is good. It's the 17 points that's a problem. Like, Anthony Davis, when you were when this streak first started for the Lakers, you were balling. He was he was giving us 13 and he was giving us 30 and 12, 28 and 15, uh, 33 and 16. The rebounds is good. It's that you missed 10 shots. You went eight for 18, Anthony Davis. You can't go eight for 18, man. You can't do that. No, you need to be dominant. Julius Randle went 11 for 24 and he dropped 33 points. Okay. That was the matchup. It was you versus it was you versus Julius Randle, Anthony Davis, and Julius Randle outplayed you. Just call it what it is. 33 points is a hell of a lot more than 17 points. You double him in rebounds. You got 16. He only had eight. But he made sure he made an impact on the game. You didn't. You got to be better, Anthony Davis. This is the Los Angeles Lakers we're talking about here, okay? This is the Los Angeles Lakers we're talking about. You don't have LeBron James. You already know that. You can't lose this type of game. You have to win this game at home. But you didn't. So now you fall down to 33 and 35 on the season. Two games on the 500. When the last time you've been up 500? Somebody tell me it was the last time the Los Angeles Lakers was over 500. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to preview the week ahead, and we'll get out of here. The Playmakers Bar is proudly to announce that it lettered a partnership deal with Paramount Plus. Paramount Plus. Stream live sports from any device that you have, whether it is your computer, laptop, or even your cellular device. Catch breaking news live when it happens, and enjoy a mountain of entertainment from movies to shows to whatever you love doing. Paramount Plus. Plan starts at $4.99 a month, but right now you can get a free trial. Just hit that link below with the Playmakers blog and start your free trial right now. Paramount Plus, Mountains of the Entertainment. 
All right, welcome back to the Lights Out. These are the standings after what took place this weekend. Milwaukee Bucks still ahead of the Boston Celtics by a game and a half at 48 and 19, and Boston's at 47 and 21. You see, Phillies in second place. They have a it looks like they have a three and a half game lead over the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are fourth. You got the Nets in fifth, the Knicks in sixth, with the Heat at seven, the Hawks at eight, Raptors at nine, Bulls at ten. To round out the playing spot with the Washington Wizards right there at 11 with the same record as the Bulls, but the Bulls have the better conference record is the reason why they're ahead of the Washington Wizards. Right behind them, a half a game back is the Indiana Pacers. And then as you look, three and a half games back is the Orlando Magic. Okay. So if the Bulls, Wizards, and Pacers want to keep beating each other up and Orlando finds a, and somehow gets on a win streak that they have done a few times this season. Things could be interesting for my Orlando Magic, but I doubt it. But nevertheless, they're not out of it, surprisingly. So it ain't going to take it. It don't take one bad losing streak for those three teams. We view the Bulls, the Wizards, or the Pacers. It only takes a, a four game losing streak and Orlando to get hot. And all of a sudden, things look different. Just saying. So, nevertheless, this is where we stand at in the East. Let's go to the West. Nuggets have a hat. Five and a half game lead over the Sacramento Kings and the Grizzlies. As you see, it's the Kings that are second and the Grizzlies that are third because the Kings have a better conference record than the Memphis Grizzlies. And that is a five game difference in conference, meaning that the Grizzlies need to start winning games in conference or find a way to finish, finish better than the Kings. Otherwise, the Kings would be the one with the home court advantage if that was to meet in the second round and not the Memphis Grizzlies. The Phoenix Suns are sitting in fourth at 37 and 30. The Clippers right there, two games behind the Suns at 36 and 33. I have a game behind the Clippers. It's the Golden State Warriors, the reigning defending champions at 35 and 33. Your playing spot that's shown is the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Dallas Mavericks, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the them and the Utah Jazz. Which is going to be interesting to see if how quick are those things are because the you know, Pelicans are sitting on the outside looking in at thirty-two and thirty-five, along with the Oklahoma City Thunder at thirty-two and thirty-five, and right behind them is the Portland Trailblazers at thirty-one and thirty-six. So going to into the week, we going into the new week. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, 7.30, the Utah Jazz are in South Beach to take on the Miami Heat. Minnesota, they are in the Dirty South to take on Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks. ESPN tonight is a special doublehead on ESPN tonight. Usually you get ESPN on Wednesdays, but you get it on a special Monday. As it is the Memphis Grizzlies in the city in the Lone Star State to take on the Dallas Mavericks. After that, at 10 p.m. on ESPN, the Phoenix Suns, they are in the Chase Center to take on the reigning defending champion, Golden State Warriors. And the surprising Kings, the Sacramento Kings, they are hosting the Milwaukee Bucks at 10 p.m. That's your games for tonight. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, NBA TV has your doubleheader at 7.30. You got the Denver Nuggets at the Toronto Raptors. 8 p.m., the Los Angeles Lakers, they are in New Orleans to take on the Pelicans. Both teams need that. Whoever loses that game, we're going to put themselves in a dire need to go on a run like none before. So if you're the Lakers or the Pelicans, you might want to play this game like it's a playoff game because it's kind of feeling that way. Also at 8, the, the hot Brooklyn Nets, they are on the road to take on Shea Gillis, Arizona, and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Your, your second of a doublehead on NBA TV has the Milwaukee Bucks in the desert to take on the Phoenix Suns, your rematch of the NBA Finals from two years ago. And then your other 10 o'clock game night cap special is the New York Knicks. They are in Portland to take on Dame Dollar and the Portland Trailblazers. That is all games for tomorrow. And then Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen, Wednesday, the Memphis Grizzlies are in South Beach to take on Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia Seven Sisters, they are on the road to begin the ESPN doubleheader, the usual ESPN doubleheader on Wednesdays, as they take on Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers. That was a big game. Philly can distance themselves even further from Philly for the three spot. Or Cleveland can inch closer to the three spot by beating Philly. 
at 8 p.m. The surprising Sacramento Kings, they are in the Chi Town to take on Zach Levine and the Chicago Bulls. Also at 8, the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, will take on Anthony Edwards and the Minnesota Timberwolves in the Twin City. And then your 10 p.m. game on ESPN after you get Sixers and Cavs, you get the Golden State Warriors against the Los Angeles Clippers. Steph Curry and the crew on the road at the Crypto.com Arena to take on Kawhi Leonard and the Los Angeles Clippers. That is the show for you guys on today. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be back tomorrow and Wednesday because we're going to talk the NCAA tournament. Tomorrow I'll be focused on the men's NCAA tournament. They lose those headlines, breaking down the brackets and whatnot. We'll do the same thing on Wednesday when we switch over to the ladies' side of it. And we'll have the Queen of Hoops on with me to talk ladies' NCAA tournament. So, Let's get ready. Get your brackets out. Links are posted all over the place. They will be posting in the show notes as well. So get your brackets ready for tomorrow. Get your brackets ready for Wednesday, men's and women's. Hundred dollars is on the line for each bracket. If you out, if you outdo me in a men's bracket, you win hundred dollars. If you outdo me in a women's bracket, you win hundred dollars. If you outdo me in both brackets, you win two hundred dollars. So hey, I'm putting two hundred dollars on the line. For the bracket challenges. So join me tomorrow and Wednesday as we break down the brackets. Until then, enjoy your basketball, enjoy your NBA. The Playmaker signing out. I'll catch y'all later. You've done good. You've done great. But you can't stop here. You can't stop now. You got to keep going. Through all your trials and your tribulations, you got to keep pushing. Now, finish your camp. Yeah. Gotta get it out the mud, that's the only way to win Who am I to point the finger like I never ever seen Been through the ups and downs like the letter in They don't let you through the door, better kick it again Girl, that's the only way to win That's the only way to go Gotta get it out the mud Gotta get it out the flow Girl, that's the only way to go, let's go Thank you for tuning in today's episode If you want to follow the podcast You can follow it on all streaming platforms Including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher And a whole lot more this has been shooting the lights out. Masterpiece.